Alright, we good. Welcome to Fighter from 3. <sighs> well, let's get straight into it because got a little bit to talk about for once. For once. <laughs> It's not every day we actually have a decent amount to talk about, especially in the off-season, but hey, that's why I like Summer League, because it gives me something to talk about. Anyways, but first, I'm going to quickly talk about the Summer League game between the Celtics and the Hawks going on right now. Um, This recording will be after the game's over, so... It's obviously going to be, I'm going to be talking about this after the game, but right now it is tied at 61 with 9.17 left to go in the fourth. And, um, yeah, Madur is doing great tonight. Off the bench. 4.05. He was doing good at one point. Now he's not really doing the best, but he has 4.05, 8 points, plus 10, has two boards, two assists. He was doing very good in the beginning. Uh, we are seeing good minutes for Nesmith. <clears throat> He's not shooting great. Four of eleven from range. One or four of eleven from the floor. One of six from range. And nine points. Romeo Langford, for some reason, is at center. Is at least just lists him at center, um, unless it's backwards and it should be him at small forward and Nesmith at. Center and Asmuth at power forward to loss in the center. I don't know how it works. I don't even know what position loss on plays, really. But Langford's got 23 minutes, 2 of 6 from the floor, 1 of 4 from 3. And he has 5 boards, 3 assists for 6 points. Carson Edwards is 4 of 12 from the floor tonight, 2 of 6 from 3, and 3 of 3 from the line. He's got 5 boards, or 6 boards, 4 assists. And 13 points. Peyton Pritchard's not having a great night, but not a horrible night. 4 of 14 from the floor. 11 of those shots came from 3. And his only makes are from 3. He's got 3 boards, 3 assists, 12 points. August is doing decent off the bench, getting around the same minutes Madur and Hauser is. Going 1 of 2 from the floor. Having five boards. But it's a close game. And uh, on the other side, you're getting a good game from Johnson, Akun, Purcell, and Mays, really, and Cooper. Their starting lineup is scoring most of the points, kind of like Boston's. But Boston, I think Boston's getting slightly more production off the bench in this. And the game is very close. All right, on to Team USA. Obviously, most of you probably know Team USA has won the gold. But before we get to that, I want to talk about them winning the silver. Or not the silver, them winning the semifinal. Jeez. I need to just stop talking. I really do. I It's one of those nights. Actually, it's middle of the day, but it's one of those days. Anyways. Hold on, it's not... I'm not finding it, so... Give me a sec. Okay, there. I think I got, I got it. Alright, so... I honestly don't even remember who the semifinal game was against. That's how little I really... I didn't really pay attention to this year's Olympics for some reason, but... I think it's more it's more because I'm a fall kind of guy. Here we played Australia in 197 78. 
Your starting lineup was Damian Lillard, Drew Holiday, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Bam Adebayo. So they played a more small ball kind of lineup. Dame. What's this will load? Dame did okay. He didn't really have a great Olympics overall. But he did play a little bit lesser minutes than normal, thankfully. And... That kind of makes me a little bit more excited. Let's see. Jason Tatum did okay. 20 minutes, 9 points, 3 of 10 from the floor, 3 of 6 from 3. Uh, this is being temperamental, so one second. But Tatum wasn't exceptional during the Olympics, but he wasn't bad. I will say that. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's still not. It's being temperamental, so I can't get rebounds right now or assists, but. Devin Booker had a good night with 20 points. He was 7 of 10 from the floor, 4 of 5 from. or 3 of 5 from 3, and 3 of 3 from the line. Bam Adebayo only had 3 points, and all of his points came from the line. None of them came from the floor. Kevin Durant had 23 points, was 10 of 19 from the floor, 9 of 12 from 3, or 9 of, 1 of 7 from 3. He was 2 of 2 from the free throw line. Jeremy Grant played 2 minutes and did barely anything. Jamon Green played 18 minutes and only had 2 points, and they both came off, and they were off free throws. Drew Holiday played 30 minutes, had 5 of 11 from the floor, 11 points. Nothing from range of two shots. Keldon Johnson, another guy who got two minutes and did almost nothing. Chris Middleton played 20 minutes, had 11 points, 5 of 9 from the floor, 1 of 3 from 3. And Zach Levine had 9 points on 17 minutes, 4 of 6 from the floor, 3 of 3 from or no, one of three from three. I don't know why it does just regular shots from like the field and then th from three. It's annoying. Uh, no, nobody necessarily went off on the Australian side. Petty Mills had a good game again. Dante Exum had a good game, somewhat of a good game. That's about. Uh, Jack Landale had somewhat of a good game. Everyone else kind of just gave contributing score, or s scored contributably, but didn't do very much outside of that. But going over to USA. No. This is annoying because I gotta. I hate trying to look up box scores because it does this every time. But looking at the box score, this isn't even the box score. <sighs> Technical difficulties again. This is kind of stuff I get annoyed with because it's so annoying to try to find and get a box score. But it's, it's coming up now. That's not a box score either. <sighs> this gets annoying after the first two. And another one that's not a box score. Alright, this should be it. Yeah, I think I got it. Yep. 
So, your starters were Bam Adebayo, Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, Damian Lillard, Kevin Durant. Again, why does it say Durant's a guard? He didn't. I guarantee you, he didn't play guard. Devin Booker had two points on four shots from the floor, and he missed all his shots from the floor, So he made, and he made two free throws. The only one who was really big from the line, and one of two people with over two shots from the line, was Kevin Durant with eight of nine. But uh, Kevin Durant had a great performance, 29 points, five rebounds, actually no, six rebounds, three assists, 9 of 18 from the floor, 3 of 9 from 3, 8, from, 8 of 9 from free throw. Damian Lillard had 11 points, 1 rebound, one, uh, 3 assists. He turned the ball over twice, and he was 4 of 11 from the floor, 2 of 7 from 3. Drew Holiday was 5 of 13 from the floor, 0 of 4 from 3. Had 5 rebounds, 1 assist, 3 steals, 11 points too. But he turned the ball over four times. Jason Tatum had a good night. 8 of 14 from the floor. 3 of 5 from 3. 7 rebounds, 1 steal, 19 points. Um, he's the only one that really did a lot notable off the bench. Levine, Draymond Green, and Chris Middleton played off the bench too. And didn't do very much. Um, they had a combined 9 points. They all fouled at least twice each. Uh, actually, this whole team besides Bam Adebayo that played scored or er, fouled twice each, but um, they all combined for ten rebounds. Oh, no, they all combined for three rebounds and six assists and two steals. So they didn't do very much off the bench with over ten minutes per each of them. I think what really lost France's game was Rudy Gobert shooting 6 of 13 from free throw. That's where all those fouls went when they went to the line, was to Rudy Gobert. Evan Fournier, the former Celtic, dropped 16 points, 5 of 15. He had a horrible night in terms of shooting. Another former Celtic, Yabusele, 4 of 11 from the floor, 3 of 7 from 3, 13 points. Although Gobert had eight rebounds, Yabusele had four, and Yabusele had two assists. But um, Decolo didn't do much in his 23 minutes. He mostly got all his points off free throws, which he got half of, almost half of them off free throws. He was three of four from the floor, one of one from three. Not um, the only really notable. There wasn't really notable performance off the bench for them either. That's got to be what lost them the game. Not only Gobert, they just couldn't get anything going off the bench. Then again, neither could we. <sighs> but hey, we still won the gold medal game and took it home. But anyways, yeah, cutting over to other topics now. Uh, Tristan Thompson deal is official. Now Tristan Thompson is a hawk. Actually, no, he's not a Hawk. He is a King. Don Wright is now in the, on the Hawks. And Boston has received Ben Fernando, Chris Dunn, and a 2023 20, second. The good thing is, is Dunn's going to bring some good defense on the wing. and He could be somebody that you put at the point guard position for some times. If you want to set up him and Smart at the guard spots, both can play some good defense. And then you've got Brown, Tatum, and then Horford's probably going to be a starter unless sometimes you want to see Robert Williams. Or you think, or, or at some point Robert Williams is thought of as the better option or something like that. But looking at the deal, we got another center, so there's that. Uh, it could put Grant Williams' job in jeopardy. I still don't know. Who knows? But um, 
All right, I think we should go to... Well, I got some quotes now from some guys. Uh, this is going to be quick to pull up this time. But... I don't have very many things to talk about today, surprisingly. Uh, Summer League head coach Joe Mazzula said of this about Carson Edwards, Romeo Langford, Aaron Nesmith, and Peyton Pritchard. Quote, they have a great work ethic, a great attitude, and I think playing in the Summer League is going to pay great dividends for all of them. That's good to hear. That's I'm happy to hear that. I'm very happy to hear that. And then Peyton Pritchard came out and said, quote, I expect a lot of big things out of Romeo and Aaron, in, refer- in reference to Langford and Nesmith. I think they're, they'll both take a step next year with their offensive game and defensive game, so we're definitely going to need them for both of these things. And then he later said on Yam Madura, quote, and then for Yam, he has long arms and quick hands, so de- he definitely has the potential to become something. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's definitely some good praise, even though he is just coming into the league. At least he kind of knows something about the guys, like like knows what he sees in the guys around him, and know, knows what he's playing with. And knowing that can potentially help you to elevate yourself, too. Because if you know this guy's good at defense, then you're, you could say, well, I want to try to be as good as him, and then you... Yeah. It's it depends on like how you look at it with this and everything. It can be good or bad that a rookie saying this, but I think it's good and bad at the same time. Peyton Pritchard also said he met Ime Udoka when he was young. Said the Portland community is quote a lot smaller. Pritchard would see Udoka at camps and such growing up. It's good. I I knew about this. Um, I heard about this when he got hired, and I've kind of ran with it because it's true. He know he's known him for a while. He's got somewhat of a connection with him, and that's very good for the future, especially with someone as promising as Peyton Pritchard coming into a second year in the league. And then Carson Edwards and Romeo Langford. Now that's, um... Yeah, I was going to say, I thought I had a quote for that one, but it's not. It's a video. And I'm not going to play it on air. Or on the thing. Um... Not only that, <laughs> apparently, hold on, I want to make sure this is true, because I never got like a second, oh yeah, this is true, and I want to make sure it is, because of what happened last week, or earlier this week with the uh, whole Deshaun Watson thing, I'm, I don't trust anybody. I really don't trust anybody right now. Well, let me get contract. Yeah, he is back with Boston, so they've kind of loaded on centers. Because you bring in Ben, you bring in Fernando, you brought in Moses to deal him for Josh Richardson, and then you bring in Ennis Cantor, who, thanks for bringing a mostly one-dimensional player back, who we didn't need. I don't want him. Please tell me this means he's going to be dealt. That would be awesome. That would be the greatest thing ever. Oh, yeah, you thought he was staying. Sorry, uh, this nightmare just ended for you. And then Missoula also said he is, quote, very pleased with where Aaron Nesmith is. He has very, he's been very impressive with his ball handling and reads. That's very good. That's I'm glad to hear these guys are progressing. Missoula also said that all of the returners have stood out during the short summer league training camp. Or did during the training camp. Which is beneficial for the rookies, especially if they if they could potentially be the future of our team. But anyways, there's... I haven't covered everything. Okay. Um, 
The coaching staff is very pleased with the work Nesmith's been putting in. That is good. I've been hearing a lot of good things about him during the summer. All right, what else do we got? There's not uh No, I already read that. Nesmith said his shooting is his quote-unquote calling card, and he's trying to perfect it. Said some days he doesn't do his shooting routine because he wants to simulate simulate coming off the bench cold. Uh, that's actually that's not a bad idea thinking about it. And then Grant Williams became the vice president of the NBA PA, and. He will begin his term as vice president immediately. He joins the NBPA executive committee alongside C.J. McCollum, who is the president, Andre Iguodawa, I can't even say it right, and when I slowed it, Andre Iguodawa, the first VP, Harrison Barnes, the secretary treasurer, Bismack Biombo, another VP, Malcolm Brogdon, VP, Jalen Brown, VP, Kyrie Irving, VP, and Garrett Temple, VP. So, that's good, and uh, I'm glad to see Grant get a spot in the MVPA, alongside Celtic Jalen Brown and former Celtic Kyrie Irving. But anyways, that's going to end the podcast here, and uh, well, there's probably not going to be news during the week, so see you next week with another podcast.